Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and uh, my, my friend, Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life, is back. How are you, Michelle? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing okay. What's Why for Life been up to? Oh, lots of things. Prepping for the summer, mostly, right? Big, big events coming this summer, including two higher things. So getting all of the all the giveaways ready. We've got some really great stickers coming. Awesome. Everybody loves stickers. I love stickers. Everyone loves stickers. That's right. So I got these stickers. I don't know why I'm confessing to this on a podcast, but they look like an outlet. They look like an electrical outlet, like a, a lot like an electrical outlet. And so you can put them on a wall and watch yeah. people try and plug things into them. <laughs> I like stickers. Um, sorry. <laughs> I poor, miserable sinner. Uh, let's talk about, <laughs> instead of that, uh, life issues and the Ten Commandments. We, we left off uh, on the Eighth Commandment. The Eighth Commandment is, uh, w- w- which, which is that? Well, that you should not have any false testimony against your neighbor, right? So that you, you don't defame your na- neighbor's name, that you should uphold it. So, um, yeah. So this is a big one for life issues. And I think an easy one to see in our regular, our everyday you know, experience. Right. Um, because we sort of diminish it to, to gossip, but our catechism says it, it means we should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him and explain everything in the kindest way. Yeah. Which man, there's two sides to that, right? It's not right. just, not just speaking ill of him, but also defending him and speaking well of him. So I think like when I was thinking about what we would talk about today, I was thinking back to our podcast that we did um, on the name of God, right? The the mm-hmm. second commandment that, that we should not misuse his name. And we know that God, um, God wants us to keep his name holy. It's really important to do so in so many ways. And we, we discussed that, you know, to, again, um, because he is our God, but also that confession um, to others, right? And so he then extends this kind of same holiness, the same importance to our name, right? Our name is important too. Our name is important to uphold. And it is directly and intimately connected to our life. When we think about names, names are are personal, right? They encompass who we are. And God, just as God's name encompasses who he is. Um, in fact, in the Old Testament, God's name wouldn't even have been said aloud in many instances, right? So, so, but we, we see our names then having this, this lesser, certainly lesser than God, but still incredibly important life affirming connection uh, to who we are. So it is, our name encompasses our reputation. It encompasses um, our family. It's connected to our family. Names have history, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, we we carry a last name that has a history that goes to generations. And maybe we also carry a name that reminds our family of another person in our family. Um, but for my whole life, I've been Michelle. Right. Um, and, and that name goes with me. And that name was written in the book of life at our at my baptism. Right. That name is the name that God knows me by. God knows me by that name. So that name is really important. Right. Um, and, and even when we want to give like our greatest gifts of some of our greatest gifts that we see um, that we give others is to give others our name. When, when a husband um, gives the gift of his name to, to his wife, he not only takes her into his family and, and protects her, right. And, and um, she is now under his umbrella, but he gives her an additional history, a connection to, to his past and to his future. And he says, you, you now, you, you are, are mine, you know, this great gift that God that God gave me. And when she accepts that name, she's combining her history with his, right? So this is, um, this is just a, an awesome gift, um, the, the gift of a name and, and to uphold that gift then is, um, is life affirming. So it's saying that this person, this name, this person is important. This person is valuable, not only today, but historically and in the future, right? So we want to not only uh, speak well of them now, but we want to help them with their reputation even in the future. So yeah. 
it, it's not just sort of what God would have you do, but but what God would have you you sort of recognize of yourself and of your neighbor that that your names, that your identity, that your you as a person has so much value that nobody else is along allowed to come in and, and um well use awful words that that have a lot of power to tear it down and and we recognize that like we we've had to lie to our children and tell them sticks and stones would break our bones but words would never hurt us because it's just not true uh, there there's so many there, there, God shaped everything, but but people with words. Um, he, he brought light with words. When we use words for evil, it causes a lot of harm. And God actually cares so much about the life that that He has created that He would actually even guard our identities. Um, and what what I love about it is is that He doesn't just do it for the people who are right, but but He'll do it even for the people who are wrong. Yeah, yeah. So that aspect is really wonderful too, right? So we we can look at it what happens when we speak ill of christians well we're not just speaking ill of of their name their reputation their family the people they're connected to but but because they carry the mark of christ uh that's unseen in their baptism we're also then speaking speaking ill of of the christian community and of god himself right and and um what what a witness that is to the world uh, who who needs to hear of Christ, but God doesn't just protect the children who who know Him as Father. He also wants to protect those who do not yet know Him or do have have turned away from Him, right? And so when we speak ill of um, someone who's not connected to the faith, and they know who we are, um, we dishonor God's name and we dishonor we dishonor the the um, the faith as a whole, mm-hmm. we, we dishonor the, the opportunity to share, um, what it means to be Christian, right? We know, um, Christians will be known by the way that they, they treat each other by the way that they love each other. And so even if it's true, and sometimes we, we use that as an excuse, right? Well, I'm just saying what's true. <laughs> even if it's true, it's still not putting the best construction. It's not helping a reputation. Um, mm. And so in this time, maybe omission is best, right? Maybe not even saying anything at all is the is the opportunity to uphold a life. Right. When uh, the very first time I got to, to join you at the March for Life uh, and actually sit down with Y for Life as they, they prepped their kids to, to uh, head out onto the, the street, uh, you, you demonstrated this for me in, in a really, really profound way. Uh, there, there's a lot of signage at the March for Life, and, and some of it is um, attention grabbing. Um, but yeah. you, you spoke to, uh, to your kids there uh, about the way to, to present themselves and, and the way to, to uh to make signs, the things that, that ought to be said in there that I, I think in a lot of ways really point to, to this commandment itself. Could you maybe for, for our audience, uh, share a little bit about how Why for Life uh, addresses people at the March for Life, uh, addresses people yeah, at, sure. at their, their conferences? Yeah, so we, we <clears throat> address them in light of the gospel, right? We recognize that we, when we interact with the world, we are sinners. We, we come to them uh, on even ground there right? We have sinned too. And so we have the opportunity and sometimes it is one moment, right? Sometimes it is one sign. We have the opportunity to uh, inject into their lives the, the message of the gospel, the life-saving message of the gospel. And so we speak of lives uh, in a way that that isn't demeaning, in a way that values both mother and child and that values that values the father as well that values the family. So when we when we write signs, when we speak of of the unborn, we speak in terms of hope, in terms of the promises that God has to offer for life, uh, to dispel the fear, but also to share the truth. God has gifts He wants to give, uh, and those gifts are directly connected to to life. Right. And the life that that he has he has earned for us, the life that Christ has earned for us uh, through his through his sacrifice on the cross. Absolutely. Michelle Bauman, uh, director of Y for Life. Thanks so much for joining us in the drive school. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You too.